Hey everyone, it's Robert over at Bloomington Acura Subaru here in Bloomington, Minnesota. You're probably wondering why I'm already inside the car. It's because it's really cold outside. So today we're going to do a video going over all the buttons in this brand new 2023 Subaru Ascent. Now this is the limited with the optional package. This is the first one in, so there may be a few buttons that I may miss that the touring will have. I'll try and explain some of those um, if possible, but let's take a look. Now, just for those of you who may wanna fast forward through the video, we're gonna start in the front seat of the car. We'll work our way into the second row, and then we'll go into the trunk, and then we'll finish off on the outside, like the trunk buttons, things like that, and I'll also give you a walk around of the outside. It's just very windy and very cold, so uh, gonna do that at the very end. Hopefully the wind dies down. So let's begin. Alrighty guys, so if you've seen my Forester video, this is gonna be a similar format. We're gonna start in the front seat. We're gonna work our way from left to right, and this is going to be the ivory interior. This is a limited seven passenger with the sunroof package. So let's begin. Up top here, you're gonna have your door handles, your door locks and unlocks. You're gonna have your memory seat buttons right here. Now the trick with these guys is you're gonna push and hold set and then push and hold one or push and hold two, but you have to hold set while you do it. Now on the outside, you can see right there, this is where your blind spot detection is for your blind spot detection in the mirrors. Now, brand new for the 2023 Ascent, you now have powerful mirrors. So if I click this button in, you can see our mirrors are going to fold in and fold out. So brand new for the 2023 Ascent. To adjust your mirrors, you're gonna take this little dial, twist it left, and use it like a joystick going up, down, left, and right, up, down, left, right. And then we can twist it to the right side to change our right mirror down there. Now, when you do put the car in reverse, that right mirror will tilt down. You can change that in the settings if you want to. Next up, you have your lock and unlock, and then your auto up downs for your front windows, your rear windows, then here is your window locks. So if you have any children or pets in the back, you don't want them to roll down the windows, you can do that. Now, down here, we have three buttons. You can see one's missing. If we have a touring model, you will have an extra button there. Now, the left one here, this is going to be your open and close for the trunk. So you're gonna push and hold to open, push and hold to close. The next one is going to be your interior light. So if I click this button, it's gonna turn on all the lights on the inside of the car. So if you have a car full of kids, anything like that, and you wanna turn on all the lights without having to open the doors or anything, you can just push this button right here. And then you have your illumination for all of your interior lights as far as the instrument cluster goes and everything down here in the front of the car. Now, last one on the left side, hard to see, but you have your trunk, or sorry, hood release right here. So if you look down, there's a little handle right there to open and close or to unlatch your hood, I should say. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, this is going to be your adjuster to adjust the steering wheel closer, farther, higher and lower. Once you have it placed, you're just gonna push this up to adjust it. Next one here is your trip reset. So let me go on this side, make it a little bit easier for you guys. As you can see right there, there's a little A logo right there. So that means we are in trip A. If I click that trip reset button right here, it's gonna go to trip B. So click it to go A and B or push and hold and it will zero it out. All right. Next up on the turn signal lever. So up, down for left and right, pretty standard. You have your high beams right there. Now headlights are set to auto. You can turn them off, but auto running lights, full headlights. And then this inner dial here this is for your fog lights. So for those of you who are wondering, this is fog lights. So now they're off and now they're turned on. On the steering wheel left side here, you do have this minus button. This is to change gears manually. If you want to downshift, you can just pull that. Um, here in Minneapolis, not so necessary, but if you live somewhere with mountains, things like that, super handy. Now we have the all new steering wheel. I do have the heated function turned on. Like I said, it's a little chilly outside. It says 32, but it's definitely colder with the wind chill right now, that's for sure. Now, this is gonna be just like the 2023 Outback. So they have adjusted it. So 
the left and right arrows here, these will go through your radio stations or if you're listening to music on your phone, you know, next song, previous song, things like that. So I'm not going to turn the music on, but if I click it left and right, you can see it goes through our save stations. The next one here is source. If I click source, you're gonna see it's gonna go FM, AM, XM, and that's gonna go try and find Bluetooth, and then it'll go back to our FM radio. Now, another thing they've adjusted, this used to be the volume up and down. This is now the buttons that used to be down here. So if I click this up or down, it is going to change what we see in the top portion of the screen here. So. Same like before, nothing really changed in that screen, just how you adjust it. Then you have your call answer, your call decline slash end button, and here is your voice command so we can click it. Please say a command. There's all your commands, and then we can cancel as well to cancel. Um, now with this, if your phone is connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, one second, I cancel that. Canceling. If your phone is connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can push and hold and it will open up Siri or your Google Assistant, which is super handy. And then your volume up and down, they have now moved down here. So down in volume, up in volume. Alrighty. Next side, right side, this is pretty much unchanged. They've just kind of adjusted the way these feel. So here's your cruise control on and off. Now, as I click this, let's see here, you can see that it's on, so off, on, that is this button right here. And then, ooh, focus. And then the top and bottom, these are to increase and decrease the following distance for that adaptive cruise control. So if you see here, there are four white bars above that vehicle right there. If I click the down button, it decreases. If I click the up button, it will increase. So each bar is one car length. And if you're somebody who doesn't typically like adaptive cruise control, you can push and hold. And then I don't know if you saw that, I'll zoom in again for you. So push and hold. And now you just have traditional cruise control where the car will keep going until the very last moment, in which case you would need to pull out the way, hit the brakes, or the car's pre-collision braking would take control. And the last one here is going to be your lane centering. So you can see, let me take that off there. You can see as I click that on the top right, you have your lane centering button right there. So lane assist, lane centering, just means that the car will keep you in your lane while you serve out of it if you are driving. Last one on the steering wheel, heated steering wheel, like I said before, and it is the entire steering wheel this time. It used to be in between these little um, grooves here. It is now the entire wheel, which is very welcomed. <laughs> Now on the right side, here is the plus button. So this is to go up a gear. And then let's find a good way to show you guys this maybe from, nope. <laughs> so let's see if we can make this a little bit easier for ourselves. So you can see on this end cap here, let me zoom in a little bit. So on this end cap here, this is going to be for the back window, so we can rotate this forward or back to go off, on, fully on, all that stuff. And then you have your actual wipers. So to rinse the white, you know, to rinse the windshield, you would pull this whole stem back towards you to rinse the windshield. Otherwise, we can push it up once to go one time. You have down where you can adjust the following or the speed based on this dial, and then you have low and high for full wipers already. So that's gonna be steering wheel and the left side here. Next one, start button. When your foot's on the brake and you push this in, there'll be a green light. That's how you know the engine will turn on. Otherwise you'll have a little red light up here up top. Now, the biggest change is going to be your center section here. So we now have the 11.6 inch touchscreen that you would be familiar with on 2020 and newer Subaru Outbacks, except this does have the update. So this one gets your wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. They have adjusted this bottom screen here to make it easier to use. So you no longer have to open a menu to turn on your seat heaters, which is fantastic. 
If you are in a touring model, you will have two buttons here, one on the left, one on the right for your heated and ventilated seats. Your fan speed mode, much easier to touch than before when they were quite small buttons. You have your rear controls, AC, there's a the rear right there. And we can still click this button and go through and click wherever you want or drag it up and down, whatever you prefer. I still typically like to use the physical buttons. I'm just that kind of person. Now you also have physical buttons for your front defroster on the left side and your rear and mirror defroster on the right side. Above those is your volume for the radio and tuning and scrolling. So we can go from 101.3 to 101.5 or 102.1. So pretty standard there, similar like in the Outback. Now with this new screen, besides changing the bottom portion, they've also adjusted the top portion. So now you can see we're on the weather. If I click this, it opens the weather. They didn't used to have that before, which is really nice because it always felt like it should have been a button before. There's your X mode, so you can turn that on and off. If we wanted to go here, you can click that, and now you can adjust what you want to see. So if you don't care to see your acceleration, you could change it to oil temp or the speed limit or off if you don't want anything. So that's adjustable up top there. Oops. And then here's your map and then your radio. So if I go out of here, click on the radio, and now my radio has popped up in here. Now for the radio, one thing I really like is they have now made these favorites gray instead of purple like they were before. I always thought that was just kind of an interesting design choice. This definitely looks a bit more modern in my opinion. If you like it, let me know down in the comments. If you like the old one, let me know which one you all prefer. Now, radio, I'm not gonna get too in depth here. Like I said, you can change the stations here. You can direct tune where you can just type in 97.1 or whatever it is. And then up top, if you click that, that's how you can adjust your equalizer as well as where the sound is positioned in the car. Now, this one being a limited does have the really nice Harman Kardon sound system. So if you are looking at a Subaru, personally, highly recommend going with the Harman Kardon. If you are anyone who likes music, I have it in my Impreza and it's fantastic. Alrighty. So I'm going to stop there on the main screen. Now up top, this little bar here, that is the EyeSight Assist um, driver monitoring system. So you may or may not have that, that recognizes the user. So if you're falling asleep, it can warn you and it would give you a little warning on your main display here. Um, really neat. Um, some people don't like it as much because they may not stare straight at the road when they're driving. I don't know. I like it. It's a great safety feature to have. Now up top, you can see much smoother than before. If you're familiar with the older Ascents, you'd remember like a little bulge that would come here and made it really hard to adjust the mirror. Well, now I have space all around it, which is awesome. Now, if you do have a touring model, this mirror will be a little different. You would have a little lever down on the bottom, which you could use to turn on the camera on the rear of the car. Because this is a limited, we don't get that camera, but you still get a really nice wide mirror with your compass, with your three garage door buttons and the auto dimming function right there. Now, for those of you with a garage at home, if you push and hold one of these buttons here, you can see there's an orange light. The trick with this one, depending on the motor you have, is take your garage door clicker, push and hold with one hand, and then push and hold one, two, or three with the other until that light turns solid green. Alrighty. Now, up top, just like before, you still have your sunglasses holder with your mirror. So you can see into the back if you have any, any kids back there. Hello. <laughs> Next up says door and off. What this means is if I open the doors, then all the lights will open. So just so you guys can see. And if I set this one to off now and I open my door, nothing happens. So that's that right there. On the left is your Subaru Starlink. So your emergency SOS button and your I button so that's gonna be if you run out of gas or get a flat tire stuff like that you could just push the right one up here and once you do have a profile active you will have a little green light appearing there lights and then this is for your sunroof and sunshade so this one does have the big sunroof panoramic moonroof whatever you want to call it 
So the way it works is the right one's for the shade, we can push it a little bit, or if I push and hold for a second, it will open or close all the way. Now you can see there's two panes of glass. Only the first pane will open. I'm not gonna do it because it's cold outside, but you just push this one backwards to open it and forward to close it. So same motion as it is in this guy here. And I'm actually gonna leave that open for now just to help with lighting in here. Now, going down, we have a 12 volt charger up here. You have USB, A, USB-C, headphone jack, and then you now have the surround view camera, your 360 camera. So Subaru finally has this. So if I give that a click, you can see there's our 360 camera. Now, right now, it's just gonna keep spinning around until you get to a view you like. And then we can push this little button right there and that will stop that spinning view. Now, what I think is really neat is I've, if I put the car in reverse, we now have our backup camera like before. And for those of you who commented on my Outback video, I think the backup camera is improved um, from the previous ascent. I personally think it looks better than it did before. I don't know if they just increased contrast or something like that, but definitely looks clearer than before. And you now have your parking sensors and it will show you where you are near to something. So if there's a post over here or a car over there, it will show you where it's coming from. Now, here's your reverse automatic braking. If you don't want that on, you can push and hold and that shuts it off. I'll turn that back on. And then you have your parking sensors where it will beep at you as you get close to an object behind you. Now, what I like, and this is what I want to show you, is this button right here. So if I give that a click, it changes the view. So we now have the top-down view, so you can see my, I'd say pretty okay park job here. If I click it again, we now have the backup camera on the left, your sensors on the bottom, and the top-down view on the right. And then now it's back to our normal backup camera. So really handy, really neat. I am definitely a big fan of this. Put the car in drive and we click the view button down here, you also get access to the front camera and this kind of really cool front angle view. So these lines I'm guessing are the very front of the vehicle. So if I click this, we can go to the front camera like you're used to on the Ascent Touring and you still have the top down view. So I'm gonna inch my way forward to this WX here in front of us. You can see we're getting closer, getting closer, and now you can see it's starting to appear on the bottom camera here, which is super, super cool. I like that. So if you are parallel parking, very handy. If I click this again, there's a top down, and now we can see on the sides how close we are getting to the vehicle in front of us, and then backup camera once again. And we'll go and put it back into park. Oops, driver monitoring system right there. So once you set it up, that's that guy up there I was telling you about. Oops. <laughs> okay, so going down here, your gear selector, nothing really changed in here. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, and M for manual mode. You've got your parking, electronic parking brake, lift it up to engage, put on the brake, push it down, we'll disengage there. And then our center console, once again, unchanged, you have a little coin storage and then a fairly deep pocket in there, which is nice if you do have kids or anything like that where you need to fit more stuff in there. Now, on the right side, there's your vent, door handle, door lock, and then you do have door locks for all the doors and your auto up-down window over there. Now, the next one I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hop out the car, so I apologize if it's windy, um, it's regarding the driver seat. Like I said, I apologize if it's a little windy. Now, if you do have a leather trim seat for the Ascent, there's this little handle right here. You can lift this up and extend your leg support or your thigh support, whatever you want to call it. So for those of you who are taller, this is going to be a lifesaver on those road trips. So you can make it go closer, farther. For your seat adjuster, we can lift the front of the seat. We can lift the back of the seat. You have forward and back. You have the tilt, and then you now have your four-way lumbar right here. 
So we'll see if it shows it for us. Probably won't get a pretty good view on that, I'm guessing, but if you can see it, it's gonna be in this area right here. Now for your headrest, in case you aren't aware, they can lift up. There's a little uh, kind of button to reset it. And to actually adjust it, you just pull it down. So it has kind of like a ratcheting system. So you reset it by pulling all the way down. Now let's hop in the back seat. Alrighty, going to the back seat, first of all, if you're not aware, super, super wide opening doors in the ascent. So very easy to get kids in and out of. You do have your sunshades, window shades right there. Door locks, cup holders, a ton of them in this car. Now for the second row, like I said, this is the captain seats. They also have a bench seat. It's the same idea. Now to get into the third row, there's a little lever right here. Just give that a lift and you can get in and out of the third row. Pardon the mess back here. The car just came in, I wasn't joking. <laughs> and then on the side, you have two levers. One of these will let you recline or fold the seat. And then the second one is the actual folding of it all the way down. So the first position will lower it, well, let's show you. We'll lower it a little bit. And the second one, so just so you can see how flat that goes, it is still angled, but pretty good if you do need to load anything back there. And then along the front, you do have the rails so we can slide the seat forward and back. Oh, before I forget, sorry for the helicopter in the background. Here's your child safety locks on the end of the door here so you can turn those on and off. Oh, back into the warmth. Alrighty, so back here for second row passengers, you do have temperature controls. You do also have heated seats for the second row. So all of your leather trimmed ascents will have heated seats for the outboard position. So the left and the right. If you do have a bench seat, the middle is not heated already. Now we can adjust all of our temperatures. We can adjust fan speed, mode, all that. You have two USB ports here. If you have a touring, you will get a uh, like wall plug outlet. So like the two or three plug outlet for houses. And then even more cup holders down here. So you gotta love it. Passenger side, same thing. Like on the other one, you have your sunshade right there cup holders, windows, doors, all that. Now back here, if you do have captain's chairs, the armrest is ratcheting just like the headrest. So as you lift it, it will stay and then go all the way up to reset it already. And then from here, you can see the big sunroof once again. And then up top, here's where your vents are. So there are vents in the second row on each side. And then you also have them in the third row so everyone in the back of the car can be comfortable. Now I'm gonna move stuff in the back and uh, we'll open the back and start going through there. Alrighty, now here's the third row folded up for you. You do have three in the third row. Now on the side over here, we have more cup holders, you have a speaker, and you also have two USB charging points right over there. And on the driver's side, you just have more cup holders. Now, to give you guys an idea, I'm gonna hop back here myself. Oh. All right, so I'm in the third row of the Ascent. Now, with this seat all the way at 5'11", I'm kind of cramped. Now, the good thing is you can slide these seats forward. At 5'11", I can sit comfortably behind myself in the first, second, and third row, but it is doable if you need someone. Now, you have the, cap or the captain's shoes, this makes it a lot comfortable if you do have someone taller back here. Now, my head at 5'11", it is grazing the top of it. It's not too bad though, um, but it is touching. And then here's gonna be your headrest. So one, two, and three, and they just slide up from there. So you still can be fully protected back here. So that's the third row. I'm gonna go in the trunk, I'm gonna fold these down, and we'll continue on. Alrighty, once again, I'm gonna pardon if there's any wind, I'll do my best to uh, talk a little louder just in case. Now, with the third row up, here's gonna be your space in the back. One, two, three of my hands at least. Now, you do have some storage down below. 
you are able to keep your cargo cover down here. Now I do have a video specifically on the cargo cover. It is unchanged from the previous 19, 20, 21s and 22s. And then below here, you'll see there's a little pocket. You can see the little tabs for it right here and right there. That's where all the tools are for your spare tire and you can access the spare tire from there. It is down below the vehicle. Now you do have some cargo hooks, another 12 volt outlet over here and your cargo light so you can see what's going on. Now for the rear seats to fold them up or down, or at least fold them down, you're gonna pull this handle and push it forward. To lift it up, you can just grab the handle here and they will lock in, I believe, three different positions so you can kind of control where you want them to sit at. So let me fold this one forward for you guys. So lots of space, really nice vertical side. So if you do need to fit larger stuff in there, strollers, boxes, whatever it is, lots of space back there. And then up top, as always with any Subaru with hands-free access, you have two buttons. One button here will close the trunk and lock all the doors. The one is just going to be to close the trunk. Now, that's gonna be everything on the inside of the vehicle. We're gonna do a quick walk around on the outside as well as a few ones I didn't get to show you before. So, like I said, this is the Ascent Limited. Now, kind of tricky because this one does have chrome mirror caps, which is typically reserved for the touring models. Now, this is the new Cosmic Blue Pearl. I turned on our headlights so you can see the new headlights and the little kind of LED design that they have with them. I really like this. I think it's really classy. I am a huge fan. You have your fog lights down below over there. Now this is the new front grille, front fascia for the Ascent. Just like the Forester, the new WX, the new Outback, they have this really aggressive C-shape design here. I don't know the technical term for it, but really aggressive. You've got a gloss black grille with the chrome accents on there. Now that will change based on the trim level that you have over there. You have new wheels. I really like them. I think they're kind of cool looking. They have gloss black with machine finish. And then on the mirrors, you can see now this little protrusion. That's where the camera is for your surround view camera right there. Now, some of the buttons I wanted to tell you about. On the driver and passenger door, you have two little grooves here. This is how you can lock the doors. So when you get out of the car, just push and hold, that will lock. Otherwise, just grab the handle. There's a little sensor in here when you grab it so it knows to open. And then here's our new rear. Once again, chrome accent there to match the front. Tail lights very similar, but just slightly different. You have your backup camera. And then down below, I'll see if, it's, if you can see it. It's kind of hard to tell, but you have one button here, and then you have another little one right there. This will lock the door. You can also program a code, um, so you can lock a key in there, but just click the button. And that's how we can open and close the trunk back here. So, there is the new 2023 Subaru Ascent Limited. I'm gonna post some more videos on specific things like getting your phone paired, CarPlay, Android Auto, just little things here and there that we didn't cover today. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please, please, it means a lot. Like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see any more videos like this, or if you have any thoughts of things you want to see, please let me know. I love making these for you guys. They're a lot of fun and a little different to uh, spice the day up here at the dealership. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next video.